It's exciting to be here, and I almost tripped on my way coming up the stairs. <laughs> um, one of the things I wanted to say is for Beauty Night, just to explain what we do, what we do is provide programming to build self-esteem and change lives for women and youth living in poverty. And we do that through wellness programs, life skill development, and makeovers. Um, just to give you a little bit of background. And I'm ready to go whenever we're ready to go. Sometimes I like to think life in terms of if we're embracing good health, should feel kind of like a beach where you get to hang out with your friends, you feel confident, you feel really good, you feel healthy. You're not afraid to go into the polar bear swim even though it's January 1. Making sure you feel really good, that connection, just that feel good thing. But a lot of the times, Vancouver Foundation, which is one of the largest endowment funds in Canada, uh, did a study in uh, 2012 and they found that many people in Vancouver don't feel connected to their community. They feel isolated and even though we live in one of the most gorgeous cities in the entire world, we don't feel that we connect with people. Sometimes we feel that we're actually stuck where we can't connect, where we feel like we're actually drowning in the trees, almost like we can't find our way out of a forest. And I find that with the work I do with, with the women, children, and some of the men as well where we see people who are dealing with other things such as homelessness, addiction, mental health, violence. And sometimes they just want to scream. Sometimes I want to scream too because I feel bad as I hear the stories that so many people go through that they should never have to go through. No human being should ever have to go through many of the things that the people that we see go through. They're searching for peace, but yet somehow peace is turned upside down. They're searching for love as well, but yet they're not able to connect. Sometimes because of the barriers that they face, they don't feel that they're worthy to reach out to service providers, both for basics such as food, such as shelter, but as well for medical services as well. There's been many, many times in the past 15 years since I've been doing the work that I do that I've been medical emergency contact for many of the women and I get random calls at, at all hours of the night and have to go to St. Paul's or another hospital to just help them go through because they're absolutely terrified of being there. And for some of them, just that connection, the fact that I'll give up my time or one of my volunteers will, makes them feel they're climbing up a tree again where they're not drowning in that forest. They're able to come up they start to believe that it's a possibility of connecting. And in terms of that, we started thinking about how can we change healthcare? How can we shift things? And what makes sense to me is to work with some amazing organizations and work with healthcare. We can build community where we do workshops in terms of combining things like yoga and having the women write their own stories. We're able to do different events where we bring in different healthcare providers, such as our friends from Shoppers Drug Mart, who um, bring the, for the pharmacists out to do um, flu shots, or perhaps our friends from BC Disease Control who come out and they'll do things like pap tests for the women. We do a lot of that and we fuse it with the beauty because they'll come out for a haircut, they'll come out for a massage, they'll come out to get their feet taken care of, and they stay and then they start talking to the healthcare providers that are there. The very first beauty night I ever did was back in 2000, where what I did, and this is one of our women, and with that, I was volunteering at a shelter, and I ended up doing one of the girls' hair and makeup who came in after dealing with such atrocities. It was pre a really horrible day. And after I did her hair and makeup, she thanked me for making her feel human. So when I did my first beauty night, it was back in 2000, and I bugged everybody I knew who did hair and makeup, and they came out and offered the services, and we found it was a really great way to reintroduce touch to victims of violence in a non-threatening way. What we also found, at the time there was this wonderful program, uh, the street nurses in the downtown east side, they found more people actually came and spoke to them and started talking about some of their health concerns because they're already there. They came out and they'd show them, I want to show you my nails, or I want to show you my haircut, and ended up actually asking a health-related question. As we continued growing our program, which we now work with over 50 organizations, we found different things over the years. Things like our friends who are able, our volunteers are now our past participants, where sometimes they'll come out 
and being able to connect in intergenerational, where they get to actually hold the baby sometimes. So some of the moms who are hiding from abusers are able to have, have a makeover, get their feet taken care of, have their nails painted. And as that goes on, we're able to chat and see if somebody wants to create an exiting strategy for somebody who is, who is wanting to leave someone. These are some of the pictures from a project called uh, the Love Umbrella that we were able to participate in. But I think one of the things that I love the most in terms of coming in healthcare and in terms of people feeling good is it's the community piece. When people start to believe change is possible, when they get to connect, with people, whether or not it's us bringing in a photographer where the women get to pose for pictures, they get to get things done, they start to believe change is possible and start to see all the possibilities are there. And this is me doing aerial yoga. As I mentioned, I do teach yoga as well. And it allows people to start to fly, or at least believe that they can. Just that magical quality where we used to all believe in Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, the Tooth Fairy, that quality. And for someone who's dealing with multiple barriers, it's one of the most beautiful things in the world where we can just actually just jump for joy and really believe that change is possible. And when we do that, both ourselves as well as inspiring other people to do that, and for us, it starts with self-care. And when we do that, we start letting other people believe change are possible. And it's a reciprocal effect in terms of that. This beautiful woman, who's one of our participants, is now doing talks all through the Lower Mainland, which is really exciting. Um, and it's from that confidence, because it comes down to straight up hope. Because I don't believe change is possible unless you believe change is possible. It comes right down to hope. It's simple, and if we're able to give a hand to somebody to make that hope possible, can you imagine how amazing this world would be? And that's my hope for healthcare. Hope. Mm -hmm.